What's going on guys? Welcome back to Pure Evil MMA. I have a special guest with us here today. Another standout from the season of the Ultimate Fighter. We got the fight guy on the line, Delani Perry joining us. What's going on, Delani? How you doing? So man, coming into this season, there were so many guys that were undefeated. You walked in to me immediately. I was like, "What is this guy all about?" Going into this, was it what you expected? Yeah, it was top athletes for the world. Everybody's talented. Everybody's good. Nobody sucks. Everybody's undefeated. You know, you know, you go into with a mentality thinking you're never gonna lose, but nobody on the show ever lost before. So you know, some people do got to take a loss. Obviously, everybody can't go home undefeated because we're gonna have some fights. So uh, it was an amazing experience, best experience of my life, and uh, happy I was there. Well, you've seen some of the past seasons before. You've seen how you know some of the. Uh... Some of the guys on there have interacted before. Going into this season, did you realize that, listen, Ultimate Fighter isn't doing as good as it used to do. You know, it, it needs some characters. It needs some action. You came and you had all the tools that the show really needed to spice up a few of the episodes that you, uh, that you really shined on. How much of that was pure and how much of that was, uh, you know, entertainment side of it, knowing that, you know, you're trying to help the company? Well, nothing's pure. Everything's business for me. I don't do nothing for free. I do everything for the fee. So me, I'm just looking. I'm looking to make sure I do every decision I make. I'm making sure that I go in uh, uh, with the with the uh, mindset to get as much money as I can and get as much exposure as I can. To open up more doors for myself in the future. So if you pay attention, 16 fighters in the house. Only one fighter in the house had a billboard, which was me. Uh, also. If you, if you paid attention to Tough Talk, even though I lost, it really didn't matter because out of everybody that out of everybody that went to Tough Talk on the show, I'm the only loser that made it on the show. So it showed that UFC gave me a lot of airtime and they gave me a lot of publicity, even though I lost my fight. And they knew that previous previous to the, sh to the show airing, so you know they knew what to do. They know who the, who the star of the show was, and and I put myself in a position to make myself the star of the show. I didn't. That didn't just happen by chance, you know. I did everything strategically, and if you look at the if you look at the shows that has the most viewings, all of the shows that have the most viewings are the shows that I uh, stirred up a lot of controversy. And so, you know, I did my job. I went in and I shot. Well, one of the controversies that you started, obviously, was a fight that kind of broke loose, but then kind of died down in those moments. I forgot who it was against. Well, was it against Suman or who are you beefing with uh, by the, by the front door? Not Suman. That was uh, Jose Martinez in, oh. the, in the van, and then we came up the van and into the house. That's right. You were, you were uh, bugging him in the van, saying, you know, I, I got all this. You you're nothing outside of here. You know, th did that escalate or did that just die off right then and there? When I died off. We killed him because you know we just we're professionals. We was heated in the moment, so you know things got a little spicy, but. <laughs> We're professionals, so we killed it when we got to the house because we all uh, just paying attention to our goals. But I didn't really care about that. I just I know what I'm doing. I know that I need to create some controversy so I can get the viewers watching the show and paying attention to me. Yeah, you got you got everybody all heated up. Even Joe Giannetti, who was like kind of a quiet guy, at least in front of the cameras. You he even threw some stuff off the counter. I was like, have you not seen the past seasons? But you were just talking about your experience on Tough Talk with Michael Bisbing. I tuned into that man. I thought that was absolutely hilarious having Bisbing put on all those chains and and you really were pushing the point that a lot of these fighters don't understand. Uh, you know this day and age it really is moving towards the entertainment business you have to be a well-rounded fighter that's winning their fights and you also have to know how to act in front of the mic what was the lesson that you were really trying to uh teach on tough talk there because bisbing you know he, he was having some fun there but uh you know it really seemed like you were trying to push the lesson of what these fighters need to do kind of following your footsteps and the guys before you well, absolutely a lot of a lot of fighters need to fight my footsteps a lot of fighters need to follow my footsteps because uh, it's, 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 as much as it is, it is fighting, but it's, it's business before it's fighting. So if these people can't make money, if the company can't make money, then they don't have no reason to, to sign you. I mean, if you can't sell those tickets, they don't care how good of a fighter you are, realistically. It's all about helping them make money. You understand? Who cares how good of a fighter you are? There's millions of great fighters all over the world. There's great fighters that you'll never even see fight on a mainstream level just fights to them. So it's not about who's the best fighters. Who can make these people the most amount of money? Who can create the exposure to make the most amount of money? And that's what I did. You know, I, I went in there to do what I to do what I do and look like you said, Michael Bisping had on a chain, he had a chain
name represent me. And uh, I gave him money. He, he made money rain. <laughs> like, you know, I had to throw him money. So it's like, they created a whole segment for me on Tough Talk, which they never did for nobody else either. You know, when Michael Bisping, he told, uh, he told the Tyler Diamond guy, he said, uh, he said, he said, go over there. We're going to do a little segment on the line. You know, that's special. But like I keep telling you, this, is, this, this happened by no coincidence. I put myself in position to make things, to make these things happen. And if more fighters follow my footsteps, there wouldn't be so many fighters out here talking about they're broke and, and UFC doesn't pay enough money, Bellator doesn't pay enough money. A lot of fighters out here are saying that and they don't have no money because they don't know what to do. They're just concerned about fighting. And the sport is bigger than just fighting. Conor McGregor is not just a fighter, he's an entertainer. If you look at Floyd Mayweather, Floyd Mayweather is not just a fighter, he's an entertainer. I mean, why did Kimbo Slice get signed? Kimbo Slice was some, some street fighter. Nobody ever, nobody believed that Kimbo Slice would come to the UFC and, and beat up all these professional fighters who's been trained in martial arts for 10 to 15 years and things like that. Like, you know, he, they signed him because they knew he could make money. They knew he could sell, sell tickets because he already had a UFC. He already had a UFC back. He already had his own crowd of people. You know, so that's kind of me too. If you look at, if you look at the show and you pay attention to who got the most followers, only one person got a lot of followers. And this Luis Pena, he, he passed me now. He's at 20,000 followers on his, uh, like 22,000 followers on his, uh, on his Instagram. But I got the most followers too. I got 15, 15.6 thousand followers. So we're the only two people that really gained major exposure. You got the two people that, that won the whole thing. They don't even have any followers on Instagram. So nobody's paying attention to them. So shout out to them for being good fighters. And, 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 and that's, and that's cool. They're, they're martial artists, very good martial artists. They won the show, but who cares if nobody knows you? You have no doors that you can open for yourself to go to in the future to make money. And, and that's yeah. the that's the thing here, man. I mean, he, you know, Stipe was an amazing coach on this season, but I feel like he was missing something that now he got the fire after this loss to DC. He's all fired up. Did you feel like Stipe maybe could have done a little bit more to promote himself as a champion? And, and you know, this being one of the last seasons of Ultimate Fighter, do you think there was a little bit more that Stipe could have done? Well, as far as, you're talking about in terms of Stipe promoting himself? Exa yeah. I don't think he's really too concerned about promoting himself because he is the heavyweight champ of the world. And he, uh, he, uh, you know, Steve Bay is just such a good hearted guy. Like in the show, like a lot of things I didn't see is, uh, like he always took us out to eat and stuff like that. He took us out to play games, like go, go kart ride and stuff like that. Steve Bay is just, he's really a humble guy. He's not really like the out there kind of guy. But I think if he was out there a little more, he could definitely make more money than he's making, even though he's making a whole lot of money now. You know, I think I think he's one of the highest paid UFC fighters right now. But uh, yeah, controversy always sells. That's that's American history. You know, controversy sells in America. And uh, if he was a little more out there, he could make a lot more money. But he already he, he's, he is making a lot of money, so we can't just sit here and say, you know, Steve Bay's not doing the right thing because he's pretty well off. Well, yeah, that's not that's not even my point. My point being, like, obviously after the fight, and we're going to get into the fight and, and, and see what your thoughts were, but DC versus Stipe, afterwards, we all know that Brock Lesnar entered the octagon, and there's a reason why that happened. Uh, if you look at 2016, 17, and now 18, moving on to 2019, we're really lacking a lot of big uh, entertainment stars where, you know, our big stars like Ronda Rousey, Conor McGregor, even, even John Jones. I mean, they have to kind of pull in an outside source, even though Brock is, you know, WWE guy, he has worn UFC gold. Were you a little upset with this Brock Lesnar thing? Or do you think this is, you know, there's a reason behind all that and, and the fighters aren't picking oh, up on it. It was genius. It's a, it's a money move. It's, it's, it's that, that's what needs to happen. You know, you need Brock Lesnar in there. It's a money move. That's why he went in there and he, he pushed Daniel Cormier. You, know, you think all this stuff is in stage? You think they didn't plan that? He, the way he called Brock Lesnar out, it, it looked like WWE. Mm. And then Brock Lesnar gets in there and he pushes, he pushes Daniel Cormier all crazy and then everybody jumps and looking like they're going to fight. We all know they're not going to fight, but they make it look like that for the greatest entertainment and for the money, man. You got to create, you gotta, they got to stir up some fire so that the people are eager to want to get in there and see the fight. I mean, what fight did who? Who did you want to see fight the most on that show? Me and Tyler Dom, you got the number one pick versus the last pick, but the last pick got the biggest stuff in the house, and his name is Fight Guard. Come on. You know, I, 
know, I like what Suman did too, getting you uh putting support behind you dressing up like you. That was pretty that was pretty funny. Yeah, Suman's my boy, man. Good guy. Good you know, guy. Another thing that I definitely respect, I was talking to Lewis about this, about you, you know, that mentality that you held. Muhammad Ali once said, I had to make myself believe that I was a champion before I could become a champion. And I really saw that within you, trying to make yourself believe that you were one of the best in the house. I mean, all these guys are undefeated. All these guys have, you know, a fair chance at the top. But you being uh, one of the bottom seeds going up against the number one seed, I really enjoyed the mentality that you were trying to hold bringing yourself into that fight. What do you think went wrong there going into that fight against Tyler Diamond? Uh, like, who, who's Lewis that you said you said? Uh, I was talking to to um, the violent Bob Ross. I was telling him that I really... Oh, uh, yeah, well, honestly, I really didn't... You know, I kind of felt like I, was, I lost that fight because I wasn't really paying attention to winning a fight. That wasn't... To be honest, that wasn't my goal, and I should have made it my goal more. Like... Well, I'm a fighter, bro. Like, like, first of all, I'm going to show for reasons. So, like, a lot of people talking shit because of, like, the way I lost. But it's like, I got there. You got to think, to get there, I didn't, like, I'm not, I don't suck. Like, you watch all my fights. My fights are all entertainment fights. None of my fights are boring. All my fights, when you look at them, they're very entertaining. I dance. I play around with the guy. I do fancy things. Like, you know, but my, my mind wasn't focused on winning a fight. My mind was more focused since the day I got in there was to win the show. You understand? To win the show with superstar personality and create controversy. So by the time the fight came, you know, you, I'm looking, I'm fight, I'm going against the guy, Tyler Diamond, who his motive the whole time was to win the fights, win the fights, win the fights. So, you know, usually when I'm in the streets, I mean, yeah, usually when I'm at home and I, and I, and I got fights there, I pay attention, I do my whole camps and pay attention to winning the fights. You know, so when I get in there, that's what I do, I win the fight. But my mentality wasn't that because this is bigger than winning the fight. I mean, this is winning this show because you you don't know. Everybody's undefeated. You don't know whether you're going to win. So the greatest thing for me, the thing that I'm paying attention to is, look, even if I lose the fight, if I win the show, I'll have no choice but to get called back, you know, because they'll know that I, I'm the guy with the popularity. I'm the guy that can make the money. So that's what I went in there and did. And by the time the fight came, I kind of fucked up because I wasn't thinking about winning the fight as much, but it doesn't matter, bro. Like, that that didn't make me a break. First of all, the fight doesn't count in the record, so I'm still undefeated. It doesn't even matter. And I got I gained the most exposure on the show, me and Luis Pena. We're the two guys that created the most exposure out of everybody on the show. So, you know, it don't, it don't mean that some guys won fights and they still got 2,000 followers, you know. So it don't matter if you win your fight, but nobody knows you. You can't make money if nobody knows you. You have to have people that are going to spend money to support you in order for you to make money. You understand? Companies have to see you. In order for them to sponsor you, they want to know that you have a following. So it doesn't matter that I lost that fight because I'll be back and I'll beat up a lot more people. And they'll, they'll just say, that's the guy that was an ultimate fighter. Yeah, he lost there, but he's back and he's beating people up again. You know? So it's no big thing. And like you said, you're undefeated. You're you're zero right now, what, and you're training at one of the best gyms on on the planet. What was the response that you got when you went back home, and uh, and uh, what were your coaches saying? What were your teammates saying to you? Were they watching the season first off? Yeah, absolutely. Everybody watched the season. Everybody in my gym was watching the season for me. So, you know, everybody thought I was going to win. Nobody ever thought I was going to lose. People know how talented I am. UFC fighters come to my gym all the time, and I spank them. Like you know, so it's like. There's no doubt about my talent. This is that. It was a little. I, I feel I was a little starstruck too. Like you know, like like it, it was a little. It was a little weird. Like being around Dana White and all these people fighting. It's like oh my god. <laughs> like all these cameras in my face. You know, I was a little starstruck. But these guys they more talented than me. And I I beat up UFC fighters in my gym all the time. So it's like I ain't even worrying. I ain't even worrying about that. Like I'm just. It, it don't matter. I'm still undefeated. I got no losses on my record. I gained a lot of exposure on the show. You know, I got big time sponsorships looking at me. A lot of people looking at me. Everybody's looking at me. I'm the star of the show. Everybody wants. Everybody's in my DMs. Everybody's telling me they rooting for me. Everybody's writing under my comments. You could go look at my Facebook, my Instagram, everything. I got more followers than everybody on both of them. You know. Yeah, pe people watching the video cast, they can see that you got you know 14.6. Uh, thousand followers. We're looking at the picture of you and Dana White, and it seems like a lot of guys 
on this season. We're really taken back by, you know, uh, Dana White's there and, and his son's there watching. And it, it's, a, it's a huge experience. So my question to you is, what was your number one takeaway that you're always going to remember from season 27? Train hard, man. There's people at, 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 at the top level in the world, man. It's a lot different from fighting on a local circuit. I mean, everybody out there is as good as you and better. Like, you know, in, in life, there's no shortcuts. You want, you want to be great, you got to work hard, you know. But in terms of working harder, you also got to work smarter. You know, sometimes it, 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 it's about you working smarter, more importantly than it is about working harder, you know. And that's what I try to implement. And I hope that more people look at me and implement the same thing so that they can make money because if you're just a good fighter you'll be broke you know fighting fighting doesn't really pay you good unless you're controversial so you know gotta learn how to get out there and get more controversial and have some personality and, and get some money i mean fighting is a job this is not this is not like i don't care about being the best fighter because at the end of the day if you're the best fighter you don't make no money you can't go home and pay your bills you're not successful in life you know this is a job. People are doing this to pay their bills. So do what you got to do to make money. And being controversial is going to be make is, is going to make you money. Being quiet and humble that's not going to make you no money. You'll be broke and wondering why you're breaking bones and getting black eyes and you're not making no money. You'll feel like an idiot. So you listen to me. You'll be happy. You'll make a lot of money. You'll pay your bills. You treat your girlfriend right. Raise your kids the right way. You'll be very happy. So just follow the fight guard. You know. Also follow me on Instagram at fight guard underscore. Facebook at Delani Perry, you know, and I'll keep entertaining you guys and keep giving you guys tools to just maximize your potential in life. Before we let you go, Delani, I need to ask you, what did you think about the fight for UFC 226 between DC and Stipe? Did you see it going that way? I, I you know, Stipe is a big guy, and, and, and when I, I was previous to that fight happening. That's what I was thinking about. I said, you know, I think Daniel Cormier has a lot of skill, but I was also looking at Steve and I just kept saying, you know, that's a really big guy. You know, and that's the only way I thought that he was going to win was just by being big and being stronger than DC. Other than that, I didn't think that he was more talented than DC. You know, so I thought that it would be more of a wrestling thing to DC the way he was going to win. I thought that he would put him on his back and maybe ground and pound or something like that or just take control on the ground. But I didn't I didn't think a, a chance that he was going to win standing up by knockout because he has such a long reach advantage. But he did a good job of putting his chin down and getting inside. And you see, that's what he did. He put his hands up, chin down. He took one on the way in. He got inside real close and hit him across the, the bottom of his chin. And that's it. Lights out, baby. You know, but that... That goes to show you, too, that winning and losing doesn't matter. He makes heavyweight champion in the world, one of the highest paid fighters in the UFC. He got knocked out the first round, you know, so what are you going to take away his credit, too? No, fighters win, fighters lose, it don't matter. Things happen, he'll be back, have uh, another million dollar fight, he'll be good. There was one last hilarious moment that I got to bring back up. Uh, before you were going in that fight with Tyler Diamond, uh, you know, DC was kind of ragging on you about that 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 little teardrop. First, how did that happen? Was it just the wind? Was it something that Tyler said to you? What exactly happened in that moment? Yeah, it's a production gym because, you know, they're filming a reality show. So, I mean, they have these bright lights in the sky. I mean, these lights are bright. You know, when they're making you stare down, this is like the longest stare down that I've ever done in my life. So first of all, for some reason, my eye always waters. My, 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 my eye always waters anyway, but I had shades on, so I was pretty good. If, if I didn't have those shades on, my eyes probably would have watered a lot more than that. But, you know, in a stare down, you're not really trying to blink. I, well, I don't know about nobody else, but I'm not really trying to blink. I'm trying to just keep my eyes straight, and that's what I was doing. I was trying not to blink, and I was trying to just look them straight in the eyes, and... I don't know, the lights, man, they just got the best of my eyes, and it, and it, it dropped the tear. And I started cracking up because when you were on Tough Talk following, they brought that up and you were like, you know, who's DC to say that, that I'm crying? Because, you know, his moment. I got to give you props for that. I was rolling around laughing. Karen was, was loving it. And, man, you definitely stood out this season. Even though you lost your fight, you're definitely one of the guys that stood out. And I'm really looking forward to your next fight. We're definitely going to be following you along with these other 15, 16,000 people on Instagram and and Facebook. Last but not least, do you have anything else that you'd like to get out on the table before we let you go? 
Just follow me on Instagram at fightgod underscore follow me now. Delani, thank you so much. Have a blessed day and behave yourself. There you go, guys. Delani Perry, the fight god, joining us here on Pure Evil and Meg. We've wrapped up oh, about three quarters of that entire cast. And it's crazy because the season is now over. We have one season left. Let me say this. I just found out that, yes, it is going to be heavyweights. It's going to be coached by Kelvin Gaslam and Robert Whitaker. But did you know this? There is still going to be 145-pound female featherweights that are going to be joining the heavyweights. This is going to be a really interesting season. It's going to be going out with a bang, especially since it's the heavyweights. Guys, I'm Evil Eddie from Pure Evil MMA, MyMMANews.com. Subscribe down below. We got all new merch up at teespring.com slash Pure Evil MMA swag. I'll catch you in just a little bit. Behave yourselves.